Hey, what's going on YouTube? Just going to introduce the topic again, uh, a new segment, My Humble Opinion. So this is the first edition of My Humble Opinion. Uh, discussing today, Antonio McKee signing to the UFC to fight Jacob Volkman. Um, this is taking place at UFC 125. So for those who don't know, Antonio McKee um, is the current lightweight champ for MFC. Um, He's 40 years old now, fighting out of the body shop, and after his bout, his recent bout, he called out Sean Shirk, uh, no, he called out BJ Penn and Sean Shirk, and what I look at that as, he's looking for marquee fights, valid fights, to really solidify his place as the top 10 lightweight, because he's been beating up nothing but mediocre lightweights for the past, I don't know what, five years? And now he wants a change in his life to really test himself, put his name out there, and, and uh, finish his career, his MMA career in the UFC, possibly. But all this talk about fighting BJ Penn and Sean Shirk, to me, it just, it just doesn't seem like he's really calling them out. It's more like he's calling out the big checks. He's looking for big money, big checks, and by calling out these names he gets attention so along with that you get sponsors you get signed to UFC you get these big deals big promotions um, you get notice that's what he wants attention um, but not in an immature way like a kid does more like as a fighter who hasn't been noticed wants to be noticed for his work and I can appreciate that but what I don't respect about attorney McKee is the fact that he beats up guys and talks as if talks big as if he's King Kong. Okay, the guy has not fought, like I said, top ten competition ever. I don't think he has in his career. Maybe one guy, but Derek Noble is not even on a top ten level anymore, and hasn't been since he started ever. So how can you really say Derek Noble, one guy out of the, what, the 25 people he's beaten, 17 people he's beaten, that Derek Noble stands out? Okay, problem I have with his matchup against a guy like Sean Shirk is he's not, he's not, he's not a fight, he's not a champion that has been tested to be put on his back. Most of the guys in the UFC are going to put him there. Um, and you don't even have to go looking for those top 10 guys. You can just look at the guys right now, not even the top 10, the, the upcoming guys. Evan Dunham, um, Tyson Griffin, <clears throat> um, Clay Guida, um, Jacob Walkman. I mean, you have so many people that can equivocally put him on his back and, and beat him, standing up or on the ground. You got Terry Adam, Joe Sadaropoulos. Um, Nate Diaz, if he comes back to lightweight, you have so many options, so many people, so many good guys to beat him up. Joe Lozon, uh, Joe Daddy Stevenson, Diego Sanchez, if he comes back, uh, to 55. I mean, the list goes on with, with that division. Um, Javier Dos Anjos, uh, Jeremy Stevens, Melvin Gallard. Uh, the list continues, like I said. So, for him to call out BJ Penn and Sean Shirk is only for promote promotion wise and, and marketability um that's the only thing that comes to mind now picture him fighting a guy like Sean Shirk won't go so well picture him fighting a guy like BJ Penn keyword focused BJ Penn won't last long him fighting a guy like Jacob Volkman will be a tough fight for him um for one reason the style the style of the fight is a horrible matchup for him. But I do give him the edge on the feet, depending on how long he can keep it there. But see, the, the problem with Jacob Volkman is he's tricky on the ground. He's not just a grappler that looks to lay and pray or keep you on the ground. He's a grappler that will frustrate you, thinking that you have a position defended and you're in another tight spot, defending submission as well as, as being mounted. You know, he's, he's a, a tricky grappler, tricky grappler, a guy that... You don't expect to, to to really out grapple you and make you look silly, but he will. He uses his wrestling more of a of a jujitsu standpoint that everything revolves around his grip strength and his 
his ability to, to, to really scramble well and hold down position. I mean, the fact that he had with Ronnie Torres it just showed how much better suited for lightweight that he is and how good he is on the ground in scrambles. He's really good on the ground in um, maintaining top position, getting out of bad positions on the ground, um, surviving. Like when he fought Paul Kelly, I think he took a vicious knee or a vicious punch, dropped and hung in there and just um, dominated the ground aspect in that fight against Paul Kelly. So if Paul Kelly couldn't put him out, I wonder how Antonio McKee is going to do so. And I'm not trying to bash him, but I just don't see it happening. I mean, he, he takes the fight down as well. He likes to keep the, 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 the fight um, in his winning aspect where he's landing elbows. He's he's dictating the ground and pound. I don't, I don't think he's going to be too successful, too successful against Jacob. I think Jacob has... Um, definitely the, the strength advantage, the size advantage, uh, the stand-up would definitely go to Antonio. But, um, conditioning, can he, can he hang pace-wise with Jacob? Um, I'm not saying Jacob is a world beater. I'm just saying Jacob is not a guy to look, to look past or take lightly. And if Jacob loses this fight by split decision, there's going to be holes exposed tremendously in Antonio's game. Um, but if he loses for the decision, then he becomes more credible that maybe he doesn't deserve a fight with Shirk or Penn, but you should keep him around. So that may cause a lot of other lightweights to say, hey, I want to crack at him. Let me see how good I do against him. You know, but I just, I just don't see him being a big threat in the UFC now because now he's fighting 90% of grapplers. Majority of the guys in in the lightweight division are grapplers and very highly skilled grapplers at that. So for him to to even step in with a guy, he's gonna have to be on his A game. And I'm not a big fan of his. I have the utmost respect for him. Um, he's a little cocky for my liking, but at the same time, he's a little bit delusional because if you remember, MFC doesn't really get broadcasted as often as. WC does so the only time you catch MFC if it, if it's highlighted through AT net or if it's put on on a network that a lot of people can catch the fight but now that he's fighting a grappler who's gonna test him I can see him doing enough to sprawl and brawl maybe but Jacob Volkman is relentless that's the first thing that comes to mind he doesn't let up any position doesn't let up any time so He's going to set the tone of the fight, be very aggressive, um, check kicks, if not catch him, um, eat whatever Antonio throws at him, but I think Jacob is, is definitely going to wear on him though, that's one thing, like, can he hold up conditioning wise at 40 with the with the high volume of grapplers, um, Gleason Sabal is another one, as big as that guy is, Jim Miller, uh, Cole Miller, Kenny Florian, um, so... I mean, how does he handle that? How does he handle the grappling at lightweight? He's he's fighting the upper echelon of competition now. He's fighting the guys that he should be fighting. So, not to really bash him. I just want to see how he does. But I don't think it will turn out as well as he thinks it will. I think it's going to be a tougher fight. It's going to be a fight for him to stay and a fight within a fight. And with that being said... If you're not fighting for yourself, or if you're not fighting for the right reasons, you shouldn't be fighting at all. So for him to fight Jacob Walkman, he has to beat him to get to Sean Shark and BJ Penn, which he's actually maybe three fights away from doing. But again, I don't think this is a fight that he's really looking forward to. Um, I think he's more so after the money, after the, the sponsors, the promotion, just to, so to get his name mentioned. Um, I, think, I think that's what's going to happen here, but... Whether he beats Volkman or not, yeah, congratulations, you beat Jacob Volkman, you know. What does that mean? You got plenty other guys who are better than him and just as tough that will still give you a hard time. So how do you match up against those other guys? That's how I'm curious to see he does. So 
um, a little over 10 minutes here, but I figured I'd break this down and really give my insight, my, my opinion on this as well. So, this is my humble opinion on Antonio McKee in the UFC. So, thanks for watching, and um, I'm out.